It's so interesting to talk with our physical friends because you, we love you very much, have such a warped view of reality. It's so warped. It's like you have a big house and every room is beautifully furnished and immaculately tended to and technologically brilliant. It's just this fabulous house with this incredible view surrounded by the most beautiful plants and you have decided to live in the closet with the vacuum. <laughs> And sometimes other people come to visit you and they look around your house and they say, Oh, wow. Oh, I would give anything to live here. And you'd say, why? <laughs> why? Because without meaning to, you have practiced yourself into viewpoints that are depriving you of the fullness of all that you are. And we want you to come out into the rest of your house. We want you to come out into your world. We want you to find a way a little more every day to allow your full view of not just what is, but what is becoming because what is, is changing in relationship to what your viewpoint is. You see, everything is perceptual. So if you are sick, it's a perceptual thing. And often you will say, no, 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 no. It's proven by the test, by the facts. There are a lot of people who are confirming this sickness or confirming this bankruptcy or confirming where I stand. And we say, all that is happening is that you are perceiving fragments of that which you really are because you are practiced at not allowing the fullness of who you are to manifest. So when we talk about manifestation, what we're really talking about is your perception of what's around you, your perception of your body, your perception of your world, your perception of your economy. That's the big one these days. So many people perceiving based upon what other people are perceiving. That's like saying, well, my mother lived in the closet and her mother lived in the closet. And I thought we were just supposed to live in the closet. And I know it's not rational when I listen to you, Abraham. I know that I could just open the door and come out, but it's not easy to open the door and come out when I've been in here for so long. Now, this analogy is strong. You laughed at it at first. Now it's starting to depress you. <laughs> but the reason that we offer analogies is because we want to get your attention. We would like you to leave here today saying to yourself, I want full view. I want full view, which means I want to be moment by moment, day by day, up to speed with how the source within me is viewing life. And what we mean by that is you are so much more than these physical bodies. You are so much more than this physical beingness that you sometimes or even often perceive. You have source within you. You are more vibration than you are anything else. So. We would like to convince you that this is a vibrational world. It's a vibrational world that is changing constantly and has already changed in ways that please you, that you are depriving yourself of seeing because you haven't come out of the closet yet. You're still hiding from the real reality as you are scrutinizing the limited reality. And when you realize that there is a bigger reality, we want to coax you over here into this vibrational reality, this vortex of creation, we want to coax you over often enough, speaking to you in reasonable terms until we elicit from you a vibrational resonance that then gives you full view. Sometimes in your human vocabulary, you say, Oh, then I saw the light. Then I saw the light. And we say, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Then I remembered who I am. Then I remembered that all is well. Then I remembered why I'm here. Then I remembered who I am. Then I remembered all is well. Then I remembered who I am. Then I remembered how it feels. Then I remembered, then I remembered. And it's a visceral memory. It's a lighthearted memory. It's a all is well memory. It's everything is good memory. It's that it doesn't matter what appears to be through my 
screwy, limited, self-inflicted interpretation of manifestation. We want you to hear us and believe us when we say there are manifestations in your vortex that if you will hope for them and believe for them and eventually come to know them, they will manifest in full view for you. Have you ever had an experience of sharing the planet with others who don't see it the way you do? <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever been in a particular place in time where you were laughing and someone else was crying and you were standing in the same space? Have you ever noticed that perception is about what's happening to you individually, not about what's happening to you collectively? But if you are able to drum up enough attention to the collective from CNN does a good job of it and so forth, that the individual perspective is then skewed by the larger perspective, then you begin feeling much the same way and then you begin having more and more of the same experiences. That's really what economic tides are about. In other words, if you could listen as a collective consciousness to 30 days of good news about your economy, it would become a global reality. You don't have to wait for them to figure that out. It can become a personal reality, you see. You don't have to wait for anyone to figure out. You don't have to wait for the manifestation that you've been observing to improve before your mood improves. In fact, that's backwards of what deliberate creation is. If you can figure out how to improve your mood, your improved mood will put you in a vibrational resonance with the broader point of view. And when your personal point of attraction harmonizes with the point of view of the source within you, you have a point of attraction that is so powerful, nothing can keep it from being. But if you let your point of attraction get separated from that larger view, there's not enough action in the world. You cannot buck your own current, you see. So now we're going to start at the beginning of this just briefly. We know you've heard it from us, but in light of what you just heard us say, now we're going to rework that into the picture that you've been hearing before. So you were source energy before you came into these physical bodies and the larger part of you still is source energy. Now, many of you want to say, blah, 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 blah. I don't care about that part of me. I don't even remember that part of me. Don't talk to me about that part of me. And we say, we have to talk to you about that part of you because that's your source. That's your power. That's your clarity. That's your wellness. That's your energy stream. And you want that to be your point of attraction. If you're running around in this physical body and your point of attraction is just based upon the stuff you think all day, you're in deep doo doo <laughs> because you watch CNN. You listen to people complaining. You watch the evidence. When you let reality as it stands be the dominant reason that you're offering the vibrations that you are, well, then what happens is you launch rockets all day long, but you don't allow yourself to become the manifested receiver of those rockets. And so life just gets harder and harder and you just get onrier and onrier. But when you understand that every rocket that you launch causes the larger part of you to become more and it is your unequivocal desire to become a vibrational match to that energy, are you getting what we're saying? We're going to start over because we really want you to hear this. So you were source energy before you came into this physical body. Yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> and the larger part of you still remains source energy. All right, we'll accept that, Abraham. And here you are physically focused, mixing it up. Now, we're not for a moment implying that as you are physically focused that you're leaving behind all of that source energy. In fact, in the beginning, you don't leave it behind. In the beginning, you are that source energy. Your parents and those who surround you sort of grind it out of you uh, over time as they encourage you or force you to face reality. But that larger part of you remains 
uh, to some degree always no matter how much you pinch it off by facing reality so we'll start again you were source energy before you came into this physical body and the larger part of you still remains as this non-physical source energy so here you are in this physical body sifting and sorting through the contrast and coming to greater clarity about the things that you prefer launching these rockets of desire and the source within you becoming each one of these new requests so that there is a vibrational version of you always always in existence a vibrational version of you that is your guiding feeling it is your guiding light a vibrational version of you that if you will decide that you will seek resonance if you will seek residence if you will seek alignment with that now here's the part that we have not said to you in any way near as clear a way as we're going to say it to you right now are you ready law of attraction is a powerful law that responds to vibrational frequencies it's the same law that makes you set your radio dial at a frequency that matches the broadcast in other words if you don't sync up with these frequencies then you don't have communication so it's the same thing law of attraction is responding to your frequency and the people that you rendezvous with even the mood they're in when you talk to them everything in your life is about law of attractions response now we know you've been hearing about it law of attraction is a term that is well used and mostly misunderstood around this planet today law of attraction is the engine that is the reason that all rendezvous of all kinds takes place it's the reason that you rendezvous with everything even your cells in your body are rendezvousing because of this powerful law of attraction because friends you are vibrational like your radios whether you know that you are or not you are frequency you are energy you are vibration and law of attraction has your number or better said has your frequency and is dishing up things to you that match it so if you want to know what your frequency is look at your friends look at your clothes look at your body look at your house look at your money look around and what's evident or what you are deciphering from life is all on that same frequency so oh, let's see we forgot what we we're going to tell you <laughs> so this is the part that we really 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 want you to hear so you hear it about law of attraction yes you sort of get this law of attraction thing you accept law of attraction this is what we want to put to you in a way that you will always remember do you want your point of attraction to include the energy that creates worlds and the source within you or do you want your point of attraction to be out here on the raw and ragged edge apart from it because that's really what this conversation is all about this is what the art of allowing has always been about what vibrational stance am I practicing which equals the point of attraction that I have established to which law of attraction is responding if I'm afraid or ornery or blaming or guilty then those emotions are my indicator that my point of attraction does not include my source because it's a very different frequency negative emotion means your point of attraction is screwy your point of attraction is not allowing all these things that you want but more important all of these things that you have already become that's why it feels the way that it does so the reason that we want to put it to you in these terms is because we think it would be a wonderful thing if you could sort of start at the base of your understanding and make a new decision that you want to attract to your manifestation from your broader inner being source energy in the vortex point of attraction yes